With this sketch, I'd like to provide an example showing how the values that we read in with analog read vary when the voltage isn't changing very much. That'll give us an idea of what the noise looks like. And I'm going to collect data to tell me which values from analog read keep popping up and see which ones pop up most often. So then I could plot a histogram, a frequency diagram showing which values are most common. So I can't collect all 65,000 and some different values as sums because an array of 65,000 values just wouldn't fit into my microcontroller. So I have to narrow it down to a region of interest. So I'm going to start off by taking 220 different values from my data acquisition, my analog read, and see uh, where the uh, hits come most often. And I'll show you how that's going to work. So I've got an array of integers here, my histogram data of 220 points to start off with, all initialized to zero. And I'm going to use my potentiometer input as a, a basic test. So if I don't touch the potentiometer, the voltage should stay about constant. I'm setting up A0 and A2 to be fixed voltages so that the A1 pin in between them will be the wiper on the potentiometer and it'll have a variable voltage when I turn the potentiometer. I'm setting my analog read resolution to 16 bits the way we've been doing all along and setting up the serial printing. Down in the loop function, every time I start the loop I'm going to say that I'm getting a new histogram and I'm going to reset the histogram data to zero just to make sure that it's set to zero every time. I'll read a throwaway value from A1 and then I'll read another value from A1 and say that that ought to be the midpoint in our histogram. So if I get 34,000 and some, then I'll look at values in the neighborhood around that 34,000. And then I'll just print out what that mid value is. So let's see what happens. Uh, once I know what the middle value is, then I can go and I can read uh, up to n reads. And I said up here I was going to read 100 times to start. I'll do a throwaway value for analog reads so that I'm always reading a fresh value. And I get an A value. It'll be 0 to 65,000 and some if I'm 16-bit. Or, or smaller if I use a lower resolution. And now I'm going to calculate this B value as the analog read value minus the middle value. So that's going to put it to a number round about zero. Pl zero plus minus a value. And then I'll put an offset halfway into the number of points that I'm collecting for the histogram so that I, I always get a value sort of zero up to the number of points in the histogram that maps to values around the middle value that I started off with. I'll make sure that B is in the range of the array because I don't want to write randomly into memory at uh, bad addresses. And then I will increment the, uh, the total that's in that element of the array and add on to the count. Now the fact that I'm doing the minimum means that anything that's more than half of the range away from the mid value will be counted in the, uh, in the lowest and uh, anything that's at, the, uh, that's at the other extreme will be counted at the highest. So I might have peaks at either end of the histogram. Then for the first 15 values, I'm going to have a delay and I'm going to print out my mapping information so that I can just check and see how the mapping works. So let's run this. It uploads and I look at the serial monitor. It says it's going to print histograms. It's getting some new data and it looks like I had about 44,000, almost 45,000. And it's mapping into values within my range of 0 to 220. And then it's doing another histogram and so on. It keeps on doing this over and over again. Now one thing to notice 
these values, it's not covering all of the different values. It's jumping by 16 at a time. So that's because we're using the 16-bit resolution when the native resolution of our board is only 12 bits. So let's switch over to a 12-bit uh, resolution and run the, uh, run the code again. So this time I should be seeing just about all of the different values. So I'm getting steps, small variations in here, uh, steps of one possibly, six, seven, eight, nine are the values that I'm, I'm typically getting out, 10 and so on. So I'm, I'm down to one analog read resolution step per one integer output. So let's look a little bit more at what's going on here. I'm going to uncomment some more data here, some more code here. Um, and I'll uncomment that, that line and those lines. So what I'm going to do here is, now that I've collected this histogram data, I'm going to print out some values. I will print out the index and what we think it maps to just to check and make sure that it maps the same way as we mapped it before. And then I'll print out the total uh, data values that I collected for my uh, histogram data. So I'm doing my mapping while I collect data, the same as I was before. And then I can print out all 200 and some values. And it looks like for most of them, there were no points observed in that range. That's uh, not surprising. We expect them all to be clumped around the middle somewhere, if our analog read system is working the way we want it to. So let's try a smaller range so that we don't uh, have to cope with all those zeros. I'm going to change that down to just 20. So again, I'm mapping from analog read values. These are uh, in the mid-range between 0 and 4095. And I can see out of my 100 data points, most of them fell in around index 10, around the middle. And there were some to either side and a few even further away, but none beyond the edges of my 0 to 20 possible uh, values that I was going to watch. So that's, that's kind of cool. I got 2808 in the middle and as high as 2816 and as low as 2803. And if I keep doing that, I'll get similar sets of data coming out uh, each time. They won't be quite identical, but they'll be close. It would be nice to have a graphical representation of that. And what I've done here is I've got this code from lines 43 to 46. And I'll uncomment that now. It's going to print some asterisks after each of those numbers. And it's going to go around this for loop from zero uh, until we get up to the number of data points in that histogram. So it'll go up. If it was just going by ones, it would print as many asterisks as we have data points in that histogram. Now, the number of reads divided by 101, if number of reads is 100, that's just going to be zero. So with this code here, the way it sits, we should get the same number of asterisks as we have data points. And let's see what happens. This is sort of a, a quick and dirty way of plotting some graphics uh, on the serial monitor that will tell us what it was we were trying to figure out. So sure enough, we've got some 
uh, asterisks there, and that's telling us roughly where our, our values are concentrated. And it's a lot easier to figure out when we have a graphic representation like this rather than a, a table of numbers. So in the next one, let's see what happens. I'll stop the scrolling. So the peak came at about 2808, no surprise. And most of them were within plus or minus two of 2808. So our values are pretty tight and it tapers off and values further away are really rare. Now, a hundred samples isn't really a large sample. And as a result, we'll get different shaped plots every time. So let's try with more samples. I'm going to go up here and instead of 100, I'm going to go to 10,000. So that we should see fairly repeatable uh, behavior with our total number of samples. I don't want to wind up with 10,000 asterisks in total. And having this increment here on K go in steps of one for small numbers and a larger value for large numbers means that we'll keep it to around 100 asterisks showing on the screen. So let's run that. still taking data it's still at about 2800 and it gets a bunch of asterisks and prints them all out and that looks to me like a fairly smooth distribution with just a few out there in the tail so because we took 10,000 samples we actually got some that went further away from the from the middle uh, which would have been a rare event if we'd only taken a hundred but you can see that still, most of our grouping here, just about all of them are within about plus minus two, plus minus three uh, steps of, of the center peak here. And that surely looks like a Gaussian sort of a distribution to me, a typical Gaussian normal bell curve. So let's get some more data. And after we get this set of data, I'm going to move the potentiometer. So now it's getting uh, 1800 uh, instead of 2800 as the, the mid value. But we still see very similar results about plus minus two, plus minus three analog values as covering almost all of the data that we read. This is really useful for getting an idea of the uncertainty or the noise magnitude in our analog measurements.